I feel terrible at how much I made fun of Manly Wade Wellman's name. Uh, okay, like, well, I, his honestly, name is Manly Wade Wellman. There's not much else you can do about that. A, it wasn't his fault he was named Manly. <laughs> B, guy was pretty manly. I'm going to give him that. Man traveled the world, lived in the Appalachian Mountains, studied folklore with the mountain people. The guy the guy earned the Manly Appalachian. Like he was Well he had to. If your parents yes. give you the name Manly, there's not really much else you can do. And Wellman? I think he was a very well man. I think mm-hmm. everyone liked this guy. He was super friendly. He was very well spoken. He was very well written. He never stopped working until the day he died. He died when he was super old and like stories kept getting published afterwards. They were like, well, he was working on this when we were done. Like just keep, his stuff kept coming out. I'm he, sure he, he was a great man. That doesn't change the fact that I don't like this story. Vandy Vandy is an amazing story. <laughs> no, it's not. It makes no sense. It's like hey, two different stories I'm got Phil. squished. And I'm Willow. I'm Phil. And I'm Willow. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Are and we going to do this forever? It's Del Toro Del time. Toro time. It's Del Toro time. I was listening to a few of our episodes, and you definitely used to do It's Del Toro time all every episode. What do you mean I used to do It's Del Toro time? You used to say, after we would say It's Del Toro time, you would go, It's Del Toro time. After That's every because episode. I used to just play the theme song, and then we would do the intro. But Not then... all the time. Even when he, even before even before we started having our long intros, you would do it. I don't know. It's Del Toro time. Then you started doing it. Yeah, because you we weren't doing today. it anymore all of a sudden. We have been doing this show a very long time. Yeah. A very long time. Uh, it's 2021, guys. It's 2021. More like 2020 fun. More like Help. Vandy Vandy time. It's Help Vandy me. Vandy time. I was so not looking forward to Vandy Vandy, and I apologize to everyone because I love this story. I hate this story. It's the best short story it's ever like, written. It's like two stories got... Squ- I think the best short story ever written is the one by H.P. Lovecraft, where the guy is trying to find a spell to break this curse on his family because a wizard keeps killing them when they're in their 30s. And then it turns out that that wizard is just a man with a gun who just shoots them. <laughs> Which story was that? I don't remember what it's called, but the guy's name was like... Charles Sorcerer or something. Charles Dexter Ward. <laughs> the strange case of I Charles think... Dexter Ward. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I just remember his... This sto- Okay. This story suffers from its placement, A, in this book, and B, the fact that Vandy Vandy is kind of the third part of a trilogy that... His name is Charles Le Sorcier. All right. There you go. Charles the Sorcerer. Yep. Vandy Vandy is... The third Silver John story, the third John the Balladeer story written by Manly Wade Wellman, it directly references the events of the last two stories. And I think is a better story if you read those two stories before it, because they kind of lead into it and you get to see like Silver John learning the kind of kind of learning is the ropes like of how this magic is working and what this area is kind of like going to give him. So by the time he gets to this, he thinks he's figured it out and then he hasn't and he has to do something else because the magic keeps surprising him i don't know i'm a that big would have fan added what a lot of context to the story and probably why i don't like it so much because it's very disjointed without all of that context it kind of comes out of nowhere like if you just read it by itself it's kind of like a weird like what's who is this guy like what's going on why do we care about this man who's singing the song why are they singing so many songs <laughs> um Manly Wade Wellman. He was born in 1903 in Africa. His father was a very famous writer. He grows up, gets a law degree, starts writing when he's really young, sends in stuff to weird tales, doesn't get published, sends it into other places, gets published. Starts off writing just like junk science fiction, but quickly, like I think in the 19, I believe it was like the ni- in the 1920s, he meets up with a folklorist, uh, a professional folklorist who, uh, hold on, I'm going to pull up his name. Um, I've got all these notes, which are fun notes, but without them, uh, a Vance Randolph. He goes off with Vance Randolph into the Ozarks and uh, into the Appalachian area of the United States and learns all about folklore, like American folklore, like from the source, like talks to people who live this folklore, learns their songs, studies folk music, studies. uh, So everything he writes about comes from a genuine place. He's not like some fan. He's like 
he steeped himself in it. He had a cabin on a mountain that he called Yandro, and be, he became a fixture for the rest of his life. He became a fixture in this area, Manly Wade Woman, in addition to like traveling all over the world and doing other stuff. Uh, so he created a bunch of different characters. He wrote so many stories and novels. Uh, he just, he never stopped writing. But Vandy Vandy is the third story in the Silver John, John the Balladeer series. And John the Balladeer uh, traveled the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina, getting into scrapes and helping people out and defeating evil sorcerers and monsters and... These stories, along with a few other Manly Wade Wellman type stories, like of his, of a few of his other series, are some of the most direct inspiration for Hellboy. Uh, uh, Mike Minola is basically like, yep, Manly Wade Wellman stories formed the basis of Hellboy in a lot of ways. Until finally he wrote the story. He, but he was like, but I never wrote a, a Manly Wade Wellman-esque story until he wrote one of the greatest Hellboy stories ever written, which is The Crooked Man. And if you ever want an amazing, amazing Hellboy story that is equal parts terrifying and heartbreaking, The Crooked Man. But it's about Hellboy goes into the Appalachian Mountains and encounters a family that's haunted by a guy, this creepy guy who keeps showing up and he's magic and it's causing a lot of trouble and how Hellboy has to help them defeat this evil sorcerer by breaking his magic, breaking his spell. It's a lot more difficult than it is in this story, um, which involves George Washington, as you like to point out. Um, but you can see the line. And what's really amazing about all of this, and this is this is this is what I kept coming back to, and it's the reason I sent you the song. It's the reason I took all these notes. The song Vandy Vandy that this story is about. If you asked Manly Wade Wellman, where did this song come from? At times he said, I learned it in the I learned it in the mountains. I learned it from a woman uh, in the mountains uh, when I was up there traveling around. Uh, and other times he was like, Oh, I wrote it. I wrote Vandy Vandy. And it's a testament to the concept of folk music and to the concept of folklore and and this rich vein of of songwriting and storytelling that he's right on both counts. He could simultaneously have written the story and I mean the song and have learned it from someone because of the way folk music exists, how fluid and nebulous the origins of these songs are, because regardless of how it came to be, Vandy Vandy is now considered a traditional folk song. It shows up on any number of albums of here are al uh, songs from Appalachia. Here are Appalachian folk tunes. It's so ingrained now in that part of the world that you're like, oh, Vandy Vandy. Yep, it's a, it's a folk song now. And it and it's changing itself and rewritten and in all permutations because that's the way folk music works. And I think it's really wild that Manly Wade Wellman steeped himself enough in this lore and in this life and in this culture that he became a part of it and now it's people don't even know the the story they're like if you read if you read on mudcat uh which is like the the folk song like database and and forum uh people are like where did Vanny Vanny come from and they'll be talking for a long time and they'll be like oh did you know there was a short story <laughs> and it's like oh like people don't even know about the story so i don't know it I, I love this kind of stuff and it just I find it I find it really cool. So but, Okay. But you don't. I hate this story. <laughs> Since you hate it so much. I don't hate Willow. it. I think it's well written. Um, <laughs> I don't want to give it that. I think in two separate parts it is well written. Hmm. What is it? It okay. seems What is it you like? Compliment sandwich. Let's start off with something you actually liked about the story. I liked the setup of the family and of what is his name? John. John. Yep. John encountering these people. Yeah. Uh, it's a really striking opening. Like he just shows up and and he's like, "Hey, can I get a place to sleep?" And they're like, "You can sleep in the woods." And then he's like, "I know how to play songs on my guitar." <laughs> and then they're like, "Have a seat at our table, my friend." <laughs> and I love that. I love that he's like, "No, no, no, no. I'm no. I'm not a jerk. I can sing. I know your songs. I can sing along with you." <laughs> um. And, uh, but yeah, do, do, what, the, so yeah, so, so tell us who these people are that John comes across. Uh, it's, they're, it's, a, I, it's, they're... it's out of the way. It's like a really out of the way place he sets up. I'm not going to lie. Their names are not very memorable except for Vandy because that's the name of the story. I will find mm -hmm. it though. There's Tuke. Tuke Millen. Yeah. Uh, there's Jill, uh, and Herber. The kids of two Camillan, 
Is that mm-hmm. how you say her his name? Uh, Haber, H- Heber, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's Calder, their son. Mm-hmm. There's um, Mrs. Miller, uh, Tuke's wife. Yep. And then there's Vandy. Yep. And Vandy who is... Who I thought was supposed to be a child at the beginning of this, and I was real oh. confused. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he runs I into this... I don't associate the word girl, mm. especially when someone says young girl. I associate mm. that with child. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm... I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I'm hip enough to uh, to the to the lingo <laughs> of certain parts of the United States <laughs> that to me, I, I when he says young girl, I'm like, okay, he would say child if he meant a little girl, or he'd say little girl. So you're, uh, young... you're not you're not hip enough to modern vernacular. You're hip to old vernacular. <laughs> it may. I grew up in the South, which is close mm-hmm. enough. To, to know that girl could be used in a non-offensive way to refer to a young woman. Like, it's it's not trying to be diminut- – they're not trying to diminutize her. They're just saying, like, she's yeah. probably, like, 16, like 16, 17. That's gross. I don't want to think about that. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just when – it's been, like it's also – it's not just the young girl thing. It's the young yellow-haired girl because when you're trying – because in a lot of stories when you're trying to describe, um, like, a beautiful woman – yeah. You use you use golden as opposed to yellow. Um yellow haired and the fact that I think that was mostly what thought made me think she was a child. Oh. Um because he's not he's not uh assessing her appearance in the way that a lot of men would mm. in this time. Well, I think that I think that that's uh, uh an important aspect of John's character, our our narrator mm-hmm. is that he's not saying like get a load of her or like she was a knockout. He's just like this is what she looked like. Mm-hmm. Draw your own conclusions. Like, and I think that me not having the background of this character probably puts a bit of a yeah. So it, it really makes it more difficult to enjoy this story. So the two stories before this are "Oh Ugly Bird," which is great, uh, and it's about John shows up in a town and there's this ugly bird that is around and like flies far away. It's like a thunderbird. It's huge. Mm-hmm. And people are scared of it. And there's also a man who keeps showing up and everyone's terrified of him. And John ends up defeating this guy by figuring out he's afraid of silver. So obviously he's mm-hmm. supernatural in some way. And then he like beats the guy with his guitar because his guitar his has silver, silver string guitar. <laughs> he has silver string guitar. And he's yeah. like, wait a minute. And he like just smashes the guy with the guitar and it kills him. And people are like, thank you so much. John and then a guy someone gives him a new guitar and he restrings it with the silver strings mm-hmm. and the ugly bird you found out the ugly bird is the guy's familiar yeah uh, then the Deseric on Yandro which is a Deseric is like a, a lean to like a cabin mm-hmm. it's like a, a it's a type of cabin and yeah. it's about a guy who's like family going way back generations uh, ha- owns this cabin and I don't he, he he hires John to go up with him I can't remember all the ins and outs but that story introduces these bizarre monsters that are great they're just like and they and they they, great (laughs) they mention the monsters in this story he's like there's the behinder which is a creature that's always behind you so no one knows what it looks like except john Mm -hmm. accidentally sees it in that story and it he's like i saw the behinder um i will never be able to unsee the behinder every time i close my eyes i am going to see the behinder and i wish i'd never seen this thing like you know there's the flat which is a monster that is just flat on the ground and then it'll just like whoop. and like and so I've, there's all these... i've i'm pretty sure i've heard of these yeah and it's and he introduces these great monsters and then i the 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 guy who hires him like gets killed he's a bad guy anyway he gets killed by one of the monsters he gets killed by mm-hmm. the behinder uh tormented by the other monsters and so in this story he's already gone through all that and he's like woof like that was a lot and then this guy shows up uh the villain of this piece uh, what's, what's his, his name? name? Mr. Mr. Lowdown. Mr. Loden. <laughs> Loden. Yeah, that was close Mr. enough. <laughs> Mr. Loden shows up, and jo- so John is just like, oh, another one of these guys. I got this. And he does the silver thing again. He flips out a silver coin, and Mr. Loden's like, keep it away. And he's like, I got it. I'm going to go check out Mr. Loden. And that's when Calder is like, you don't, you don't want to go check out Mr. He's terrible. Like, no one ever comes back. And he's like, oh, I guess I got to defeat this guy a different way this time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like Mr. Loden. I don't think you're supposed to like Mr. Loden. <laughs> I don't like him at all. He's gross and creepy. He is gross and creepy. I'm totally agreeing with you. <laughs> 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 that is, uh, he's described as so. So what happens is John shows up, and the family is singing a song, and John 
teaches them a second verse of it. He's like, oh, there's another mm -hmm. verse to that song. And that's what he wins them, wins them over to their good graces. And he's well, introduced first they're like, the no, no. I think some of them already knew there was a second verse, but for some reason they didn't want to share that with the child. Because they act all like weird about him teaching them the second verse at first. Oh, I think they were weird because the child spoke to the stranger when he wasn't supposed to. Okay. Um, because they sing the song, they, they play along, they all have instruments. And then he gets introduced to Vandy and he's like, Vandy, that's an unusual name. And she's like, yeah, it's weird. No, it's a weird name I know. And he's like, no, 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 no. Have you ever heard the song Vandy Vandy? And he's like, that's the reason I'm actually here. I, I'm looking for the, like the source of this song. And you find out that this family is the family that the Vandy Vandy song. I have a question about that. Okay. So it's clear that the creepy dude's after Vandy. Right. And the family is seemingly aware of this. Mm-hmm. Just stop naming your daughters Vandy. <laughs> <laughs> so the legend goes, so there's this, the song is about, is a two part song. It's a man and a woman sing back and forth. And the man is like, mm -hmm. Vandy, Vandy, I've come to court you. I have all this gold and silver. And then the woman sings like, I don't want your gold and silver. I don't want all that. I have a man who went away to war seven years ago. And no matter who comes to court me, I'm never going to go. I'm waiting for my love. And so then like the, the man goes away and the woman just sits there waiting for her, her, her true love to return. And the, 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 the way this story presents it is that back in the, back in the revolutionary war, there's a lot of math in this story. He's like, okay, so-and-so is 10 years old in 1780 something. So in 1790 something, they would be this. I, I was like, okay. And they, he does all this math and figures out that this family has had all these Vandys in every generation. Well, every hundred years a guy will show up to court that Vandy. Like, it just keeps happening. And now we're on, like, the third Vandy. And this guy, Mr. Loden, is there. And they're like, well, this Mr. Loden must keep meeting someone and having a son and naming him Mr. Loden again. And then he'll come and try to steal our Vandy. But it never just happens. Naming, just she stop always naming marries the someone Vandy. else. Just stop and, naming uh, her Vandy. And that's where the song comes in, is that there's always there's always someone after. It's it's interesting and you, you know, like the, logically that would make sense you're like yeah don't mm -hmm. name your daughter vandy and maybe mr little won't come by but you, it is that I mean, magic thing yeah uh that's that's what my next point was going to be i don't know any of the background to this story so i just assumed fairies were involved somehow that's always my <laughs> I assumption think, i think so there's this amazing thing uh, um, i don't know how much you know about appalachia or appalachia depending on how you want to pronounce it the Very Appalachian little. area of the United States. I know that there were serial killers there at one point. <laughs> there serial killers are huge part of the United States, 700,000 square miles. I know that uh, people go in there and they don't come out. <laughs> roughly along the Appalachian, there's like Appalachian Trail, the Appalachian Mountains. It's It runs through many, uh, many mm -hmm. uh, states. And it is essentially this area. It's a it's a it's a geographic area of the United States, but it's also a cultural area. Even though there's no set culture of Appal like they say that Appalachia is more given its designation than it has a designation. Like people from the outside are constantly like, "This is what Appalachia is." But for years, for you know, decades, centuries, Appalachia has been kind of the 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 whipping child of the United States, and it's where we get the image of the moonshiners and the mountain people and the and the Cletuses and the yokels living up on the mountain, drinking their moonshine and like playing the banjo, and people and they become the butt of jokes. When in fact, it's a vibrant community uh, with its own various cultures. It's presented, always presented as very white, even though the uh, black mm -hmm. and Mexican population is increasing exponentially there. Uh, it's it's always portrayed as having a lot of like drug abuse and poverty and starvation and, uh, and people out of work and people like a lot of health problems. And yes, it does have all that. But then so does the rest of the United States. Like it's it's always like singled out for that. And, and in 2016, it became the focus of the news again because people started mm -hmm. blaming Appalachia for voting Trump into office. They were like, those are the Trump voters, even though a huge portion of the Trump voters were not from there. <laughs> like, it's just like... Uh, they, they Trump became voters like the, everywhere. Right. It became like... The, they, be, they, get, they get kicked around a lot in American pop culture and... Uh, what someone like Manly Wade Wellman take you know was just like no this is like a, these are like real people with like real personalities and they're amazing mm -hmm. and uh, and... I don't remember what I was where I was going going with. That. Um, I don't trust mountains. <laughs> but you do trust people. <laughs> That's also incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I love about this story is that there's a moment where he's talking to Mr. Loden and 
Mr. Loden says says something to uh, to John, and John responds, and Mr. Loden's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Like our like our our rude mountain ways must seem like." must be very off-putting to like you polite worldly people and john Mm -hmm. thinks to himself like mountain ways are polite like that this is weird because like i only to him he's like have you you ever been to a city everyone's rude (laughs) yeah uh, he's just uh, there's this this man mr loden is like crazy creepy and inhospitable and rude and brusque and he's like yeah that's not the country way that's that's another way Mm -hmm. and so yeah so mr loden comes by and it's clear he's after this this young girl vandy um and he 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 whips up dinner with the family but using some kind of magic obviously because it consists of food that they do not have there um and in the end of the dinner john tests out mr loden by flipping a coin at him and mr loden's like give it away and he's like that's the silver thing again uh Um, but yes it the story reminds me a lot of the king killer chronicles yeah yep oh i totally understand that (laughs) excuse me with the uh with the story and the music and Mm -hmm. uh, yep the balladeer going around it's very much in the same tradition it's very much Mm -hmm. the same tradition Mm mm-hmm do you have yeah. anything to add to that? Nope, just wanted to say that. <laughs> uh, there's also another song that comes up in the story, and then he discusses with Calder. Uh, there was a fair and blooming wife, and of children she had three. She sent them to a northern school to study grammary. But the king's men came upon that school, and when sword and rope had done, of the children three she sent away, returned to her but one. And that song kind of goes with the Vandy Vandy song, and you find out that Mr. Loden might have been one of those three children. They determined that these kids were sent to Salem. Yes? I like this part because the kid is like, grammar, I know what that is, and interrupts the entire adult conversation. But what happens? Everyone's like, shut up, kid. No, you don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah, Mr. Loden's like, you know what grammar is? And the little boy called her's like, yeah, it's learning how to speak right. And they're like, hush you, hush child. Because grammar (laughs) isn't that. What is what is grammar? It's magic, isn't it? I don't know the... It's the study of witchcraft. Yeah. I I don't know the specific terms for magic. I don't know. It, I, I, I'm looking up. I don't know if that is... Uh, not, not I know like glamour is fairy magic. And a grimoire is a collection of spells. Yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming that these words are all interrelated. Yeah, uh, most likely. So yeah. So the song is alluding to uh, uh, this woman who sent her children off to the northern school, which they determined to be Salem. Uh, and then the Salem witch trials happened. A bunch of innocent people were killed, but there were a few witches mixed in there. And most of the witches managed to escape except because they're witches and right. But two of them were children, to... two of the children got killed, but one of them managed to flee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and we determined that that's Mr. Loden or the, or the original Mr. Loden who then, Okay, uh, I mean, I think in the story, it's pretty well established that he's the same guy. Right, right. Because he, he, yeah. <laughs> so I don't it's think we have to say. It's the same Mr. Loden. Yeah. Yeah. So there's also this thing about King Washington. Who's King Washington? George Washington. Yes. Why do they call him King Washington? Because he defeated the British king. Right. And there's this, like, idea that the notion of who the president is and how the United States government works is vague to the people who live in this area because they just... Mm-hmm. They don't get out much. And so they know there's this guy named Washington who defeated the king. So he must be the king over there. And he must be super powerful because he defeated the British king. And that takes a lot of that takes a lot to defeat a king. Uh, it's worth noting that this story is set was written in 1951 and is set in 1951. This is not set in the past. This is set in modern. All the John Silver John stories are set in the year they were written. And uh, so it's this is still like he's coming from a world of like cars and trucks and stuff. Every time you say Silver John, the only thing I can think about is uh, Johnny from Cyberpunk. I don't play Cyberpunk. That's fine. I don't play it anymore either because they call him Silverhand, Johnny Silverhand. Oh, the only John I can think of is Johnny Five from Short Circuit. The only don't John know what I that is. It is a movie about a robot that gets hit by lightning and turns alive, and he calls himself Number Five. And I watched it with you, 
when you were very young and at the very end you thought johnny five got killed by the government oh i think you've told me this story before (laughs) and you cried you cried very much it was the first movie i ever saw you cry at you cried very much because you thought the robot had died and in the end the robot spoilers did not die he had built a duplicate of himself to distract the government and then he lived in the end that's what makes that's what the difference between robots and humans are they make you cry yeah exactly (laughs) You, you've only ever cried for a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I also cried during one of the times I saw the Basilisk die in Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> oh, oh no. What about the it Rancor? It was just a big Re- snake. Of the Jedi? Uh, I haven't the Ran- seen those movies in a long time. The Rancor gets killed and the, the Rancor's keeper cries in it when the Rancor dies. The Star Wars movies don't uh, really give me that much of an emotional anything. <laughs> mm, not even when Yoda dies? When Yoda dies... Care. They had to get the puppet out of storage to use, and the puppet was broken. And if you watch the movie, one of the eyes doesn't work right. And so at times, Yoda's, one of his eyes is like drifting off in the wrong direction. And it's very <laughs> distracting, especially if you know it's because they couldn't get the puppet to work right. Also, at I... one point, he lays down and his ear folds in a weird way that makes it very clear. <laughs> it's just this puppet. Uh, yeah, that puppet was not not having it. I wonder if that's the reason they killed him, just because they were like, we can't make the puppet move very much. It's just going to fall apart. Uh, I, uh, the hot, hot take, uh, cold take. I don't know which one's bad and which one's good. I don't like the Star Wars movies. I know you don't. Uh, so back to Vandy, Vandy, Vandy. Uh, Mr. Loden goes away. Mm-hmm. And Silver John decides that he's going to... He's going to pull a Harry Potter. Well, he's going to pull a Mr. Dursley, technically. He's going to pull a Mr. Dursley? <laughs> yeah, because in the first book, Mr. Dursley sleeps in front of the door what? to stop Harry from getting to the mail. <laughs> first, he's going to go find Mr. Loden in the woods. And that's when the boy is like, you "Don't you don't want to do that. You don't. Mm-hmm. Don't you be. Don't. No. Please don't go do Finally, that. Finally, someone would, listens to this poor child. Um. Yeah, he actually says, uh, not to Mr. Loden's, he won't let you come. And his face turns pale. And I, it, it's a nice, it's very subtle, but I like that Silver John's like, all right, point taken. <laughs> it just settles. But uh, yeah, so what does he do? He sleeps in front of the door. He sleeps in front of the door. And how does that help at all? It, I don't, he's there so that the guy can't get into the house. Right. Question so Mr. Mr. Loden shows up in the middle of the night uh, and Silver John is sitting there waiting for him, laying there waiting for him. But this guy's pretty powerful and he uses a mm-hmm. spell to freeze everyone in the house and paralyze John. And he's going to uh, originally stab this is him where, to death. This is where things get a bit confusing because I didn't understand what was happening. Okay. I realized he was going to stab him to death and then he doesn't because they're like, oh, well, he's go- they're going to know that I stabbed you to death, which... I'm pretty sure they would have figured out that he killed him anyways, so I don't see why that's important. Right. Um, I just didn't get the part where he start he he was he started casting another spell. Well, what happens is John has figured out that Mr. Loden actually knew George Washington, which I love, mm-hmm. and he offered George Washington help to win the war. But then Washington was like, "I don't need your help," and he won the war anyway. And it's like the payment that Washington would have given Mr. Loden is. The Mr. Loden needed to pay his master or whoever was above him. Mm-hmm. And so now he's flipping out because he's like, oh, no, this was my like my scheme to get to get this. And he figures out that he's not trying to get Vandy for himself. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get Vandy for the other person. This will be his payment to the more powerful being will be this. Yeah, this young he woman. wants he want Well, he wants to turn her into a witch. Yeah. Uh, or take her down to hell or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're they're kind of vague on that. Um, and you kind of get the feeling that Loden's been trying to get this girl or a variant thereof for so long that even he's not really clear on what he's trying to do anymore. It's just like, mm-hmm. I, I, I got to have her. He's like, yeah, you want her for your own. He's like, yep. And also for other things, he's like, you're going to take her to hell. And he's like, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, I, I'll take her. I'll, we'll do whatever we do. <laughs> It's like, okay, dude, you, you've been at this for 300 years now. You'd think he'd have written it down somewhere or something. <laughs> well, you get... I, I wouldn't have written it down. He's a little, like, he's a little off his rocker. Like, he's a he's an old sorcerer who's been trying to get Vandy Vandy for way too long. <laughs> I have some tips for any old sorcerers out there who are trying to make a woman marry you. Okay. Don't <laughs> do what this guy does. Uh, Don't be a weird creep. Him. Don't. Just don't. Well, don't, first of all. But also just don't be a weird creep. 
don't be please don't be a weird creep uh in fact, it's not gonna good work rule of thumb, don't be a weird creep anyway like yeah, even fair. if you're not a sorcerer just don't be a weird creep in your life and uh and you'll you'll get along a lot better than than mr mr loden here so you won't get murdered by george washington you <laughs> spoiler alert <laughs> uh so mr loden starts doing a spell that uh, that John is somewhat familiar with. He's seen these mm-hmm. magic books before. And he's John is paralyzed, and he's desperately trying to move as much as he can and remember this spell that he's only vaguely familiar with at the same time. Uh, and it's I, I found it to be a very tense sequence. Like You were the only he's, one. How he's going to get out of this. Uh, and Mr. Loden starts a, uh, like, he has, like, the magic circle or whatever, and he has a picture of John, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, a drawing. And a drawing. And he's going to use this spell to make this image of John manifest itself. And then I think kill it so that that way he can kill John without there being a mark on his body and without anyone knowing it was him, so, I guess. So question. This is very confusing. Okay. It brings to life an image of another person. Right. And if you kill that image, the other person dies? Like I think, like in like like certain types of voodoo, where you can, if you have an image of someone, you can control them or you can injure them. Yeah. Well, then why bother bringing the cr- person back? What? <laughs> it I seems think, like it would be. It I think seems in like... this spell, he has to manifest that image into a physical presence that he can then injure. Okay, but then what's the point of that? That seems like it could go wrong in so many ways because it doesn't bring back the person from like it doesn't bring them to life it doesn't it doesn't uh it becomes your manifestation of said person because george washington wasn't a fire-breathing giant metal man right so what happens is john manages to free up his hand and get that silver coin and he flips it and it lands in the magic circle Mm -hmm. and what happens is because that coin had an image of george washington on it and also, I think because Loden is terrified of George Washington anyway, and for hundreds of years has sort of built up this myth in his mind of this mm-hmm. man who ruined his life, who, <laughs> dist- who who wrecked his plan, like stupid George Washington, and then he <laughs> kills the king himself. He was too powerful. And then this thing flips into his magic circle. All of Mr. Loden's fears and frustrations about George Washington <laughs> manifest into this monster george washington which i love because it is ridiculous it's because it's mr loden's all of his fears and weaknesses like this right there in front of him like what is this old man afraid of george washington like and he's been afraid of him for this long and he's just like no and you're right george washington like breathes fire on him and kills him <laughs> I have a new appreciation for this story. After learning the background and stuff, it doesn't seem as out of place anymore. Hmm. Because to me, when I first read this, it was just a story about a normal guy who went and who found a family and then was like, oh, this is a witch. And somehow he knew that and then was like, and now you're dead because of George Washington. So it says here, I'm going to read the George Washington part. Taller than a man, taller than Mr. Loden or me, wide-shouldered, long-legged, with a dark tail coat and high boots and hair tied back behind the head, it turned, and I saw the brave face, the big, big nose. They always emphasize, keep emphasizing how big George Washington's nose was. King Washington! screamed out Mr. Loden and tried to stab. But a long hand, like a tongs, caught his wrist, and I heard the bones break like dry sticks, and Mr. Loden whinnied like a horse that's been bad hurt. That was the grip of the man who'd been America's strongest, who could jump 24 feet broad or throw a dollar across the Rappananic River or wrestle down his biggest soldier. So it's this manifestation of all the legends that have been spread around. It's not really George Washington. It's this guy's concept of George Washington, which has been built up over the years. And I think that's pretty cool. Like... George Washington is just some guy. Like, he was just this guy. He, but not he, to the people he, he isolated in He was missing all of mountains. his teeth. He was missing all of his teeth. Uh, but they don't know that. Like, that, like that, and that's the point. So he gets killed. Uh, the silver dollars all melted down. And Mr. there's just a moldy little heap where Mr. Loden was. Like a rotted out stump or a hammock of, or loam or what might could be left of a man that death had caught up with after 200 years. And that was it. Picks up a pic- picture of himself, and he lays the he lays it down where he was sleeping, and he gets up and leaves. And he hightails it out of there. Like once Mr. Mm-hmm. Loden's dead, he's like, I'm 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 
Oh, and then destroyed. George Washington, like, disappears into the fire or something as well. Right, right. Once Mr. Loden's dead, George Washington's not going to stick around. And uh, it says, as I went, pot started to rattle. Somebody was awake in the cabin, and it was hard, hard not to turn back when Vandy sang to herself, not thinking what she sang. Wake up, wake up, the dawn is breaking. Wake up, wake up, it's almost day. Open your doors and your diver's windows. See my true love march away. And I love that ending because she it's that implication that john did love vandy like he was he was like not just attracted to her but if things had turned out differently john was the kind of man who could have fallen for her and she could have fallen Mm -hmm. for him but he's a traveler and a balladeer and he's got to keep moving and everywhere he goes bad things happen so he's just got to keep keep on keeping on and she's singing a song about her l- true love leaving and she doesn't even realize that she's literally singing as who could have been her true love. I don't know. I found it a little heartbreaking at the end. And then John just takes off down the lane. I mean, she's 16. There's going to be like a ton of true <laughs> love in her life. So it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> that's like 30 in the mountains. What if another man doesn't walk by for a long time? Then maybe you should. Well, I would say maybe you should leave your house every once in a while, but I don't follow that myself. So, well, none of us are leaving our house every once in a while. You were um, just out of the house. I was just out of the house. I had to go to the bank. Um, but uh, And that's Vandy Vandy uh, with the songs and everything. And John walks off onto his next adventure. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of John the Balladeer stories. A lot, a lot. In, in several novels. So if you're ever hurting for more. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're ever hurting for more John the Balladeer stories, just seek them out. But unfortunately, they are mostly out of print The only place you can find them in print is in a five-volume set of Manly Wade Wellman's works that it costs $500. (laughs) (laughs) His stuff is so out of print, it is ridiculous. There's a lot of that's in print, but he wrote so much that, like, good luck. Good luck finding it. So mad about that. That's lame. Uh, This story reminds me of a D&D one shot. (laughs) Uh, Or Probably, yeah. Like, I would say that D&D... Now I want to make a character based off of this guy. I am sure. First of all, what would he be in, in D&D? He'd be a, a, bard. a bard, obviously. But a magic using bard, like someone well, who's I mean, very bards competent. Bards in D&D use magic, yeah. Yeah. Um, but this aspect of the that that aspect of the character, the sort of like lone traveler who's like adept at magic because he's just been everywhere, that's very much Hellboy. It's what's mm-hmm. missing from like Hellboy movies is the notion that Hellboy's just been everywhere and he's encountered everything. And so when he comes into a situation, he's like, okay, wait a minute. I fought this thing. I fought something like this once. I know this old spell. I'm going to give this a shot and see how That's why I liked some of the scenes in Hellboy 2 so much um, was mm-hmm. because they weren't in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not just a fighter. He's a, he's a magic mm-hmm. user. He's an, he's an occult detective, as they used to call it. Someone who uses their wits to battle the forces of evil, which is very much a, not, a, not necessarily like a Call of Cthulhu role-playing game mm-hmm. very much. But uh, there's that element. What, is, what do you, would you call that in D&D, the person who's like an academic an magic An occult user? detective? Well, that would be a yeah. wizard. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't qualify. I would qualify Hellboy as more of a warlock type. Yeah, I was going to say, like, someone who's not, like, I'm an all-powerful wizard, but, like, I just know a lot of spells. I'm not necessarily yeah. a magic person. A sorcerer. Can... Well, a sorcerer. Well, I mean, I would I would qualify Hellboy as a sorcerer because if he has an innate ability to use magic. Um, but I guess an Eldritch Knight would be pretty mm. close as well. Okay. Because they're, they're fighters who are able, capable of dipping into magic. Hmm. So I wonder, I'm going to look up Manly Wade Wellman. I wonder if his world uh, has ever been, I was going to say has ever been used in D&D. And yep, there is a whole article about it mm-hmm. on Tor.com, Advanced Readings in D&D, Manly Wade Wellman. And it's about his influences on D&D and how his yeah. ideas have been used. So Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think if I was any good at DMing, I'd want to uh, maybe combine some of these worlds that we've read about into a good campaign setting. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think it'd be interesting, but I suck at DMing, so I'm not going to do that. Maybe you can convince one of your friends who's DM to do it. Maybe to I'll talk a, to Miles about it. <laughs> send them a bunch of uh, Appalachian folk tales and be like, "Do something with this," uh, because there's something. There's it's it's a cool setting. This notion of like the small, mm-hmm. and it is that thing like in D and D where you wander into a small town and there's like a, a problem going on, and do you solve it? Do you demand payment? Do you do it? Sometimes you've got to summon George Washington to kill a man. How 
you should create your own spell for your next uh, D and D session. Don't tell anyone about it though. And then when you get in a fight, be like, "I'm going to summon George Washington." And, and you're like, going to be like, "What?" And you're like, "Trust me, I flip a coin." <laughs> Uh, I guess George Washington shows up. I think, friends... I think there is a spell called Summon Fae Creatures that I could adapt into being able to do that. <laughs> one of my uh, one of my friends created the spell uh, in the in college spot Popeye, and you'd be like, you'd have to say like, okay, I want to roll to spot Popeye, and if you successfully rolled, then you, they would, the DM was just like, all right, you get you rolled a uh, you rolled a twelve, uh, you have successfully spotted Popeye. He's over there. <laughs> and that's it. And that's your turn. You just, you, you have the ability to spot Popeye. Nice. Yeah, I might, I, I mean, that would be really funny, uh, adding that in there. I might talk to Miles. Uh, but that's Vandy Vandy, uh, right by Bandley Wade Wellman. Uh, Bandley, Bandley, Bandley Wellman. Uh, do you still hate it as much as you did when we started? No, I don't. I have a new appreciation for it now that I know there's some actual context to it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I know you have no time or, you know, inkling, but I would suggest reading Oh, Ugly Bird mm-hmm. and the Deseric on, on Yandro because they they offer a lot of a lot of like, here's the here's the little a little context to where these stories are. And uh, and they're fun. Well, if they're I'm going to make stories. a character based off of this boy, I'm going to have to do some reading. So they they are available. Those stories are available online. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a there's a, a official website. I believe his son like was just like, my dad's stuff's out of print. So here's. Here's his stuff. Here's some of his stuff. Enjoy. Um, but yeah, there was a uh, there was a Silver John movie that came out in the 1970s called The Legend of Hillbilly John, uh, or Who Fears the Devil, 1972. Uh, it's apparently not that great. It's based on Oh Ugly Bird and uh, The Deseret on Yandro. Apparently, it's pretty slow and not too interesting. Um, uh, but yeah, this man, doesn't woman. seem. I don't think that this. I mean, I guess I could see it being adapted into a movie, but I think it would be better as adapted into a comic. Mm-hmm. Or a like a even a radio play. Yeah, or like a short animated series. Or even a like even like a, a folk musical would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Like where everyone where everyone in the cast had instruments and you sort of like mm-hmm. acted out and sang these songs along with the story. Like that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, Somebody I get just don't on think that. a movie. I don't think a movie is the proper. Uh, yeah. Uh, ad- adaptive technique for this. No, it seems like yeah. You want? I think. To be a I think more abstract. Yeah, I think that. Um, People really don't put enough stock in the animation uh, medium for stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. You can make some pretty creepy stuff. You can. Uh, and uh, Manly Lloyd Wellman ended up, uh, he died in 1986 at the age of 83. Yeah, he had a, he suffered a serious fall, which left him, which left him bedridden. And then he died. Uh, so, yeah, but he was friends with he was friends with a lot of the people who we've read about. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, his uh, the agent for his estate, his literary estate, was Carl Edward Wagner. So, do you remember him? I the only person na- named Wagner that I think of is Robert Wagner. So, <laughs> well, it makes sense that uh, Carl Edward Wagner, who wrote Sticks, would have been friends with Manly Wade Wellman yeah. because similar uh, interests. S- similar interests. So. Um, yeah, that's it. So, so what do we have next on our plate? Movie. A movie. Oh, a bee, a beehive movie. Spirit of the beehive movie. Spirit of the ladies and gentlemen, come hell or high water, <laughs> Willow and I are going to watch a movie. We're getting back to the ecstasy of influence because we have finished the first third of uh, the Dark Descent, uh, and now we're going to get back to the ecstasy of influence with the spirit of the beehive Are i'm not excited? gonna lie i am excited i'm not gonna lie though i do enjoy i did enjoy having this literary break mm-hmm. i think that we should do it more often because i think it was oh, very fun with frankenstein it was very fun with this uh so yeah so next next time you hear from us it'll be us discussing the spirit of the 1973's spanish film the spirit of the beehive i don't know anything about it except i believe it has something to do with spain after it became a fascist state so (laughs) it's another one (laughs) another one of them so i assume it'll be fun and upbeat and uh, a breeze to talk about (laughs) are creepy things scritching out of the vent yeah good good and good uh and that's it goodbye goodbye we have to do no, our wait, outro no wait don't turn it off yeah we didn't do our outro <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you so much for being uh, fans. I guess are, are you fans? People who listen to this, fans? Are they? We need like, to. Th- we need to figure out. We need to figure out what to call them. <laughs> five years it's like, what do we call our families what do we call those 30 people they are hey i know i know i know one of my professors one of my professors is listening so i'll we'll call them itsies nope that's too close to mitzi's name <laughs> deltos that's just sad timos timies we'll figure it out next week yep if you have any ideas send it into us comment on this episode at deltorotime.wordpress.com or write to me on twitter i'm at p cory gonzalez you can find me there. we're also or- at del toro time on That's twitter right. That's right. <laughs> and you're on twitter you kind of creep around twitter um i'm not really on twitter as much as i'm you're a creep scared a yeah i uh i Unfortunately, Twitter is free and news stations are not. Right. So, uh, so yeah. But until next time, with 1973's A Spirit of the Beehive, I'm Phil. And I'm Willow. And we'll see you when it's Del Toro time. Bye.